Carlos Takam defeats Senad Gashi on a seventh round TKO. This fight started very slowly. It was very boring, actually, for the first few rounds. Both guys tentative. Gashi was moving a lot. Takam built like a tank, was struggling to keep up with the fleet-footed opponent. And there was really nothing happening. The crowd were growing impatient. I'm surprised they didn't boo. I mean, there might have been one or two boos here and there, but I'm surprised they didn't boo a lot more loudly and often than they did. So very boring few rounds in the beginning. But somehow, some way, Carlos Taka, maybe with the aid of some body shots, maybe with a change in tactics, which he talked about in a post-fight interview, he managed to get Gashi to stand and trade with him. Once Gashi elected to stand and trade with Carlos Takam, the fight was effectively over. Gashi got pretty quick hands. He's only a very short heavyweight Gashi. He's only about six feet tall, 5'11", short arms. So quick hands when he, was le when he lets his shots go, but technically pretty crude. Right? The way the punches are delivered was pretty crude, even though they're quick. And he had his chin in the air when he was delivering his shots. And that allowed Carlos Takam to come in with big overhand shots, big hooks. And in the sixth and seventh round, really, he started catching Gashi with shots. And it wasn't long before Gashi was on the floor. I think the first knockdown came from an overhand right. And there were two more knockdowns before the referee waved it off. It was the same referee who ref the David Price, Tom Little fight. And some were saying that he actually let this Carlos Takam Gashi fight go on a little bit too long that Gashi took a bit too much punishment and that maybe he was overcompensating the way he refereed this fight for the dreadfully premature stoppage in the Price Little fight. It could be that, or it could be that he didn't have a horse in the race in the Carlos Takam Gashi fight. Again, I'm making no accusations. I'm just uh, entertaining possibilities. Maybe he didn't have, have a horse in the race in this one, so he officiated it fairly. But there was certainly no consistency at all. No consistency. Gashi was allowed to be dropped three times. Tom Little wasn't even dropped once. So make it out what you will. Carlos Taka moves onwards. Now, some people, or many people maybe, weren't impressed by Takam's performance. But bear in mind that he's coming off a devastating knockout defeat. Knockout defeats affect different fighters in different ways, but it's not unusual at all for a fighter to be a bit gun shy in their first fight back coming off a KO defeat. And Carlos Takam wasn't just going in there against any old opponent. He went in there against Gashi, a man who, if we look at his record, even though he's had most of his career where in Germany, I guess, and he's um, from Kosovo originally doesn't exactly have the greatest record in terms of level of opposition he was still what was he now going into the uh, Carlos Takam fight I guess he was 16 and 1 with sorry 17 and 1 excuse me um, with 17 KOs so Takam coming off a knockout defeat he don't want to get clipped on the chin. And when this guy is has got 17 KOs out of 17 wins, that must have been in the back of Carlos Takam's mind. So maybe he was a little gun shy, given that his opponent has a good KO ratio. And it would have been an absolute disaster if Carlos Takam got chinned by this guy, this unheralded Albanian. That would have been shocking for Carlos Takam. So he was careful in the opening few rounds. I can forgive him for that under the circumstances. But once he got to grips with his opponent, he looked pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he looks lumbering at times, Carlos Takam, but the size of the man, what is he, 245? Well, how much did he weigh in this fight? Let's have a look. He's always huge, Takam. 254 pounds. So Takam is an absolute tank. He only, he's only about six foot one. And he's 254, and it's all muscle. So when you're that kind of size, you're not going to be looking like Willie Pep in the ring. 
<laughs> you understand? You're going to look a little cumbersome. You're going to look, look a little plodding, particularly when you're up against an opponent who, Gashi 228, you know, far lighter, far more fleet-footed, made Takam look more cumbersome than maybe a Joshua would or a Derek Chisora would because they're very big guys themselves. So overall, I think it was an acceptable performance by Carlos Takam coming off the KO defeat. Let's see where he goes next. He did, in the post-fight interview, call for a rematch with Derek Chisora. He was very keen on that. We need to find out where Chisora is going because he's just suffered a similar devastating KO defeat to the one he inflicted on Takam. And given that fact, it would actually make perfect sense for them to fight each other next. Now, you do worry about Derek Chisora's health because he took a hell of a lot of punches against Takam and he's just taken a lot of shots and suffered a terrible KO defeat against Dylan White. How will Derek Chisora's punch resistance be affected by this? In fact, Derek Chisora has been wobbled on numerous occasions in his career, or at least several occasions. He was The first time I saw Chisora wobbled was in the Hellenius fight. He was wobbled in the first round. And he held on for dear life in that first round when he got wobbled. He was wobbled again when he fought, I think it was Edmund Gerber. Because there was the Parler fight, it was the Gerber fight. I think it was Gerber who wobbled Chisora as well in that fight. He was knocked out by David Hay. That was a pretty bad knockout. He was wobbled in the first Dylan White fight. A lot of people didn't catch it. I did point it out to people on my Facebook uh, boxing group that Chisora got wobbled. I think it was at the start of the sixth or the seventh round in the first fight with Dylan White. White landed a left hook. Chisora immediately backed up towards the ropes and started moving around, which is typically what he does when he gets hurt. He backs up and he goes towards the ropes. He did that against Hellenius. He did that against Gerber. He did that against... Uh, who now? A few other fighters anyway, where he, he's been hurt and he backs up towards the ropes. That's his default position. He'll back up towards the ropes and he'll start moving around the outskirts of the ring. So he did get hurt. He did get hurt by Dylan White in the first fight. A left hook, a lot of people didn't catch it. David Hay pointed it out, but a lot of people watching don't seem to remember it. Then, obviously, in this Dylan White rematch, he got hurt in the first round, noticeably. Then he was knocked out cold in the 11th. So... Chisora's got a good chin, but he's always had some vulnerability. He, he don't have an iron jaw. Yeah? And given the punishment he took against Carlos Takam in the first fight, well, sorry, well, if there's going to be a rematch, the, the punishment he took against Carlos Takam and the devastating knockout defeat he suffered against Dylan White, is his punch resistance going to be worse now if he were to fight a rematch of Carlos Takam next? Would he want a... a a rehabilitation fight before going in there against Takam because typically Derek Chisora, if we look at Chisora's record, if we go through and look at his, is his webpage going to load or what? <laughs> Derek Chisora, right. If you go through and look at Derek Chisora's record here, his first loss was to Tyson Fury back in 2011. Came back against a journeyman, then fought Hellenius Klitschko Hey, After he lost those back-to-back -back fights against, well, three back-to-back -back fights, really, uh, although the Hellenius fight, that was some joke business. We all know he won that. He came back against the journeyman, Avila, after the David Hay defeat, the year later. Then he beat Malik Scott, Edmund Gerber, Parler, Johnson, lost to Fury, and after Fury, he came back against a whole heap of journeymen. One, two, three, four, five journeymen until he eventually fought Kubrat Pulev. Lost to Pulev, took on a journeyman, fought Dylan White, took on a journeyman, lost to Ajit Kabayel, took on a journeyman, beat Carlos Takam, lost to Dylan White. So you can see the pattern. He's most likely going to take on a journeyman again in his next fight to maybe just get the confidence back, uh, depending on how long his layoff's going to be. I mean, he's going to have his 
He's going to be suspended for a little while. I believe it's a minimum of 28 days, but the devastating nature of his defeat against Dylan White should mean that he gets suspended for a lot longer than 28 days, okay? And hopefully they do whatever MRI and make sure he's okay before he goes in the ring again. And he has no intention, based upon what he said in the post-fight interview, of calling it a day and retiring. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, a crossroads fight between Chizora and Takam would make sense at this point. It would make sense. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about Takam's win over Gashi. And what do you think about the crossroads fight between him and Chizora? Takam says he's got a score to settle. He says that the defeat against Chizora was a mistake. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, people. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.